Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining me. This is Game God Fluent, bringing you episode 40, the big 4 0 of Let's Play Icewind Dale Enhanced Edition. All right. So we're here with Fiddlebender. Um, a lot to do today. So I guess let's go ahead and level up. Oh, we do get a proficiency slot. Uh, saving throws reduced reduced by quite a bit. Thaco reduced by one, four hit points. Uh, where do we go? Specialize the wheel to get a further minus two bonus to speed factor. We will get some minus four, minus four bonus to AC against missile weapons. Two weapon style. Probably a little too late to go two weapon style. Um. Oof. I would probably have to go. Flail Morning Star. If I were to keep this, because if we look at her attacks, only three attacks. She's using the Flail. Why is she only getting three attacks? Three. Hmm. I don't understand that because she should have three attacks. Well, now that she's... Where can I see her? Um. No. Hmm. Figured she'd have more attacks. I don't know if I want to go that direction, actually. Um, she has three attacks now. And a three... Like, with a specialized, they get an extra half attack, attack per round with a selected weapon. A master would get yet another extra half attack per round with a selected weapon. High Master and Grand Master. Hmm. If she went to weapon style, what it would look like. Get rid of the small shield plus one. Oh, those are two handed blades. <laughs> I throw the Misery's Herald on that arm. Seven and ten, Thako. But ridiculous damage. And her attacks, number of attacks, four. Thaco is bad now. But it would be reduced more if we put more points into it. Tool wielding flails is pretty wicked. Plus, she gets the both factors of the, um, how many attacks would she get with that? Two. She gets both factors of the magical weapon bonuses. Uh, plus, she's got two already in two-handed weapon. Hmm. 
serrated bone blade is good too, but cold damage isn't too effective. This far north. But Misery's Herald is certainly nice. 10% chance target will panic. And of course the fast flail has an extra attack per round. So she would get four attacks. If I went this direction. But she's not going to get another proficiency point until about level 12. Or so. Uh, I just don't know. Yeah, we'll probably roll with this. Because it does just ridiculous damage. Four attacks at 27 to 37. To 27 to 37 times four. Is ridiculous, but at a 7 and 10 Thaco, which is kind of the drawback. And, um, you're using a Bastard Sword. Life Giver, 5% chance of healing 1d2. Two attacks per round with the crossbow. What would you level up? High Master, character receives plus three to hit, plus four to damage, minus one to speed factor for wars or any extra half attack per round. Hmm. Let's say we went high master. Seven, nine to fifteen. That goes seven, five to twelve. Armor class minus three. I mean, I don't see it's too late in the game to really. go another direction. Then Bastard Sword. How many attacks per round do you get? Two. So you're doing 18 to 30. Let's go ahead and reload again. Just testing some different things. Um, How can I help? You're getting two attacks. Eight to fourteen. Thaco eight. If I go crossbow. You're getting five over two. So two and a half attacks. Now if I give you a point, say I give you a point in crossbow. You're getting three full attacks. 6 Thaco, which is very nice. 7 to 14, so 21 to 42 each round. But your Bastard Sword stays at 7. Mm, I think I'm going to go Crossbow. Kind of make him a bit better with the Crossbow. And then you... Seven hit points, level five spell, level two, level one spell. <sighs> and then Grey Lash, probably. Two weapon style. And then throw on a Mis Misery's Herald. And go with that for four attacks. Let 
Brindle, let's do your spells. Oh, she has to be actually wielding that to get the bonus of it. Mm. Well, let's get rid of that and just use the Morning Star instead. Level 5 spell. Shield of Lathander. Immunity to damage for the duration of the spell, which is two rounds. Evil creatures cannot be protected by a Shield of Lathander. Righteous Wrath of the Faithful. One round per level. Long casting time. This dip spell bestows a form of divine madness upon the priest's allies, improving their combat skills. All the priests, allies in the area of effect gain a plus one to attack rolls and saving throws, plus eight bonus hit points for the duration of the spell. Allies of the same alignment, however, gain an extra attack every round, canceling haste, a plus two bonus to their attack and damage rolls and saving throws, and immunity to charm and hold spells. Wow. Anyone affected by righteous wrath of the faithful will suffer fatigue when the spell wears off. That's a dangerous one. Righteous Magic. This is a powerful combat spell that enhances the priest's physical prowess, transforming him into a juggernaut of destruction. The effect adds one temporary hit point per level to the caster, adds one point of strength every three levels to the caster to a maximum of 25, causes every successful hit to inflict maximum damage. This lasts for the duration of one round per level. Huh, a lot of good spells here. Mask here, Light Wounds. Champion Strength. The priest effectively draws on the strength of his deity and lends it to the target creature, in effect creating a champion. The target's strength is set to 20 to 23 for one turn. As soon as the spell is cast, oh, one turn only. Flame Strike. Greater Command. Magic Resistance. True Seeing. All hostile illusion phantasm spells in the area of effect will be dispelled. The effects are blur, reflected image, invisibility, mirror image, non-detection, improved invisibility, shadow door, mislead, project image, and simulcrum. Hmm. All party members are healed 1d8 plus 1 hit points. Uh, 15 foot radius. I like this. Visual range of the caster. Duration instant in a 5 foot radius. Vertical column of fire roars downward onto a victim chosen by the caster. The spells deal 68 points of fire damage. Yeah, we're going to take this. Save versus spell for half damage. Um, Alton. I think your spells are pretty much well adjusted right now. You have to learn new spells, though. Dimension door. Confusion. Contact other plane. All right. Uh, I think I'm going to go with the choices I made thus far. And we're going to quick save and have Alton. Go ahead and head to a scroll case and pick out some scrolls to memorize. That would be Stone Skin. Teleport field, improved invisibility, greater malison, remove magic, protect from normal missiles, secret word. Oh, wait, we can't take all these out at the same time. Okay, so. We need him to pull out Potion of Genius. Drink that. Come back in, take a 
potion of mind focusing. Drink that. Gulp it down. Okay, so his intelligence is effectively 25, so let's go ahead and write these spells. Stone skin, improved invisibility. Protection goes back in. Remove magic. Oh, he's gonna be wicked after all this. Uh, emotion. Animate that. Uh, hope. Fire shield. Emotion hopelessness. Animate dead. Emotion courage. Fire shield red. Motion hope. Belton's burning blood. Let's see what else. Secret word. Auto Luke's resonant sphere. Bum bum bum. And these will probably be the rest. Secret word. Auto Luke's resilient sphere. Minor globe of invulnerability. And remove curse. So that should be everything. Yeah, that he can learn right now. Um, do you have any scrolls for him? No, these are all yours. Okay. Now let's do his spells. Level 5, he has an option. Animate dead. Uh, yeah, we'll go ahead and take an animate dead. And here, instead of... Oh, vitriolic sphere is so good. Confusion, we're mostly facing undead. We've got a lot of choices here. Secret word, it will dispel one protection. All creatures affected by the spell gain a morale boost and plus two in their saving rolls, attack rolls, and damage rolls. For one hour. Motion Courage. All creatures affected by the spell gain plus one to hit, plus three to their damage rolls, and five temporary hit points. Belton's Burning Blood. Let's go Motion Hope and two Vitriolic Spheres. Level three, he's got more options. Remove magic dispels the magical effects upon enemies within the area. Hmm. Haste, let's go with the haste. Always nice to have haste. Detect invisibility. Horror. Power word sleep and regular invisibility. All right, pretty good. Good to go. It's color sprays. Oh, how about a reflected image? The image will perform all the actions the wizard does. Um, now let's keep two color sprays and two identifies. All right, cool. So he's learned all the spells. Let's shake the bag. Oh, and the bag disappeared. I got a scroll of flame arrow. No, the bag didn't disappear. Or the bag did disappear. Ready. There it is. Okay. Hi. All right. So 
We don't really need potions. Um, Watch me go. Right then. I guess now we go rest. To get our new spells learned. And then we go ahead and head back to the Elven Tower. Um, and buy some, oh, I have to, I have to sell some stuff though to make money. Is that all? Hmm. I'm going to light a smoke here. Yes. How much gold do we have, actually? 366. That's not going to get us very much. Um, let's go sell something else to Conlin. Thought we picked up more gems than we did last trip, but I guess not. Holding is currently empty. We can't sell Kaelas's ring. Oh, I can probably sell that to Girth, possibly. So that'll help. Let's go ahead and sell. Let's see if anyone could use that small shield plus two, actually. Use it, maybe. We just got a regular old buckler. Yeah, she sure can. Okay, so we'll sell the buckler, sell the sanctified war hammer. Sell the single hammer dart, just get rid of it. Keep the crossbow. Now these items here. Even though that gives armor class and slashing resist, we probably don't want to use a plus two weapon anymore. So let's just go ahead and sell that. Hang on to the serrated blade. And that gives us 4,000. Let's go see if we can sell Kaelas' ring to Girth or maybe the wizard. And then we'll head out from there. And we'll go ahead and buy... We'll head to the Elven Fortress and buy... Plenty of bullets and bolts. Because that guy was the only seller of magical ammunition. That we found thus far. Easy as goblin pie. Yes, for eighteen hundred. There you are. We have five thousand, about six thousand to play with. Easy as goblin pie. Let's go ahead and head out. Well, we can travel to Doran Steep. Let's go ahead and travel to the Severed Hand. Done. And rest out here. Uh, we have to just traverse this tower a little bit again. And then Laryl can probably take us to Doran's Deep. Again through here. 
Um, to second level. Easy as goblin pie. and took a different route. Okay, from second level. Watch me go. Let's go up here. from here I come up here not so bad after all and here we are done done Leyland you do have fine goods my friend Cold resistance cloak. You have one elven zone boost. Cold resistance. Dire loot. Gem case. Okay. <sighs> okay, I guess I could. Essentially, what is this moss eaten thistle down? This used to be a very fine quality grayish material before the moths began to eat through it. Thistledown is a highly prized material from which cloaks of elven kind are fashioned. It is very light and does not snag easily on branches. Due to its high quality, they will have little trouble enchanting it. And rotted honey leather. This used to be a prized piece of honey leather. Honey leather is a really light canvas used by the elves to protect against rain and dampness. Although it tears very easily, elves used to make tents to protect their tamp camping gear. If we just put this in the bag of holding I don't know it could be like uh, someone might want to see that back in Koldahar and who doesn't have a cloak and who doesn't have boots and who doesn't have gloves Kensai Garrus doesn't have gloves you don't have a cloak or boots okay so what I could do is go ahead and buy these um, as well for the 5% cold resist. Cloak can go to you. Let's go ahead and read this. This cloak has been made from the highest quality cloths and furs available in the land. Hand sewn by talented elven tailors, this cloak was very common among the people of the Seldarine's hand. Outsiders have also found it appealing as they provide ample warmth and protection from the harsh cold of the north. Oh, Wizard Slayer cannot use, right? Okay, so what about the boots? Uh, Alton has boots. Does not have a cloak, but has gloves. So let's go ahead and... Okay, that says the same thing. Let's give you the boots, but let's give the cloak to Alton for 5%. Cold resist and gloves. I guess Wizard Slayer cannot use it. Or Kensai. Uh, you probably have gloves. Yeah, you have nice gloves. Um, Alton, you have... Braces of AC8 that are doing nothing, so go ahead and put the gloves on too. 10% cold resist. And let's go ahead and throw them in the bag of holding. Alright, your inventory's good. Yours is fine. Go ahead and drop that. Okay, so we spent a little money on elven cloaks and stuff. Yeah, watch me go. Now let's see.
Blinding darts. Bullets of fire plus two. Probably better than just regular bullets plus two. 1d4 plus three. Oh, this is 1d4 plus two missile, but a 50% chance of 2d6. All right, so let's buy like 80 of those, 2,800, and give those to Rindle. Now we're down to 1,800 already. Um, how many blinding darts do you have? 20. Five berserker darts. 10% chance wielder goes berserk for 10, eight seconds. I don't even like those. Let's just go ahead and sell them. Sell the wand of magic missiles. No, hang on to that. I'm a bit of a hoarder, I know. Uh, buy some regular darts. Hammer darts. Stun for eight seconds. Um, buy 40 of those. And then for arrows. Oh wait, what bolts do you have? You have no bolts plus two? Go ahead and buy these. And we're down to 326. And there's nothing really left I want to get. The acid arrow is nice. But I think you may have some of them in your ammo belt. Only nine of them. You have plenty of other good arrows. Arrow of fire plus one. Piercing arrows. Um. Yeah, I guess just buy regular old arrows. And I guess that'll be okay. Sell the elixir of health. I don't know why I sold that, but whatever. And maybe buy 10 arrows of fire plus one at least. So she has 36 of those now. And that'll about do it. Do you have a. You don't have a missile belt, do you? No. All right. Hi. We're done here. Uh, pretty sure we've done everything in all the towers. Fortunately, we can't access this one. So let's go ahead and... Head up top. Hi. And have Laryl the Bale Norn Easy as goblin pie. Transport us to Dorn's Deep. Is that all? This Elven Tower was just a ton of fun. Had a blast here. Such beautiful locations and interesting lore and all that good stuff here. Really what makes the game great. This tower had an abundance. And pretty much every area we've been to thus far has been great. Alright, let me quick save here. Laurel, take us to Dorn's Deep. The Heartstone's divination had at last revealed the source of the evil in the mountains. Ahead loomed the solitary peak that housed the dwarven stronghold known as Dorn's Deep. With Laurel's warnings of dwarven treachery still ringing in their ears, the heroes readied their weapons and started toward the cave entrance and whatever challenges lay beyond. Hmm. All right. 
So I'm going to save here. Uh, how much time have we been playing? 35 minutes. Perfect. Next time, we'll head into Dorne's Deep. I uh, hope you're enjoying the Let's Play. Thank you for watching, as always. Uh, again, next time we'll head in. See what's going on with the dwarves. And, uh, yeah. Much love, peace, and joy. Can't wait to play another one. So long, guys.